On today's episode, we are getting into the latest space news, including a new plan to create metal from Martian dust, Astra gives up on their Rocket 3 platform, and India's new rocket malfunctions. There's lots to go over this week, so let's get going. This is The Space Race. A new study from Swinburne University of Technology in Australia details for the first time how we can forge iron metal using nothing but sunlight, air, and dirt from the surface of the planet Mars. We talk so much about this idea of using in situ resources to support colonization and industry on Mars and the Moon. The idea is pretty simple. We don't have enough time or rockets to move everything that we would need to build a fully-fledged Mars colony all the way from the Earth. So, we need to start building on Mars using resources from Mars. Great idea in theory, but up until now, that's all it's been. Just a very good idea, but with no specific method to actually become reality. Now we have a research team dedicated to metal extraction on Mars, and they are developing a new process that would take processed air, dirt, and sunlight on Mars to create metallic iron. Iron is the most important metal that exists on Earth. 90% of all metal that we refine here is iron. Steel is just refined iron mixed with carbon, which can then be mixed with nickel to create super strong alloy steels for construction and stainless steel that is resistant to corrosion. But we won't even really need the nickel in most cases because Mars has reduced gravity and virtually zero air pressure. Anything we build on Mars does not need to be anywhere near as strong as it is on Earth. And since there is no oxygen on Mars, there can be no oxidization, also known as rust. Just simple iron and carbon can be used to make critical infrastructure like pipes, valves, pumps, and an electrical grid. It's also a key ingredient for making magnets, which are essential to producing electric motors. According to the researchers, their iron forming method uses just concentrated solar energy as a heat source and carbon that is produced by the cooling carbon dioxide gas. The idea is that the carbon dioxide gas will be harnessed from the production of oxygen by Martian settlers. We've talked about this before, but it's been a while. There is an experiment on the Perseverance Mars rover that is called MOXIE, or Mars Oxygen in Situ Resource Utilization Experiment. This has already demonstrated that it is possible to take in carbon dioxide from the Martian atmosphere and output breathable oxygen. MOXIE essentially works the same as a tree. Carbon in, oxygen out. The current test model is about the size of a car battery, but NASA expects to scale this process up by at least 100 times to support human operations on Mars. So, the carbon exhaust from the Mars oxygen generation plant will feed directly into the iron metal production process on Mars. This is already starting to come together, right? The team of researchers are also working to bring their study to the next level. The team lead, Professor Akbar Ramadani, says we would like to develop a metal extraction process on Mars that is truly utilizing in situ resources without bringing reactants from Earth to support further human mission and development on Mars. And fortunately, the scientists have the full support of their government to back up their research. Swinburne Director of Space Technology Professor Alan Duffy says Australia is committed to supporting NASA's return to the moon and going beyond to Mars in Project Artemis, and they will require the use of the resources of the moon and Mars to make that feasible. We are using Swinburne's expertise and industry partnerships in resource extraction and processing to help make NASA's vision of astronauts walking on the red planet that little bit easier. This work is one small step for metal processing that can make a giant leap for humanity building off-world. Some of you might remember rocket startup Astra from their failed June 12th launch, which was intended to put two NASA storm monitoring satellites in orbit. 
Well, despite still not knowing what exactly went wrong, Astra has decided to abandon their Rocket 3 platform in favor of their untested Rocket 4 design. The company has become notorious for their failures lately. The Rocket 3 design has failed 5 out of its 7 total launches, which would be bad enough for just the testing phase of a rocket, but these failures have all represented a loss of payloads or damage to facilities. Even one of their successful launches in 2020 involved a failure of the upper stage, a warning for later launches that no one seemed to listen to. But since the launch met its goal of passing its target altitude, it was technically a success. Despite the many failures of the system, NASA contracted Astra to launch their Tropix satellites, a system of monitoring devices to track increasingly common and powerful tropical storms, organizing the mission into three launches, each with two satellites on board. The loss of such a relatively high-profile payload seems to have caused some amount of introspection in the company, but instead of rethinking their general approach to rocket design, Astra announced on August 4th that it will be cancelling any flights with Rocket 3 and pushing ahead with the larger Rocket 4 platform. For NASA's part, they recognize that they were taking risks by signing on to a new launch company and are currently in talks with Astra to figure out how to proceed, if at all. Because the path forward for Astra isn't clear, Rocket 4 isn't even close to ready, and testing won't reportedly take place until 2023 at the earliest, forcing all their currently contracted launches to wait until then. In the meantime, Astra has reported a net loss of $82.3 million in the second quarter and only has about $200 million on hand. They're going to have to start selling stock to stay afloat. This certainly seems like the last chance for this company as they're really putting all their eggs in the Rocket 4 basket and a new electric engine system acquired from Apollo Fusion last year. Astra really is a cautionary tale about recklessness and greed. The company's stated goal was to make rockets as cheaply as possible, and it shows. At a time when all of their competitors are 3D printing and using biofuels and focusing on reusability, if Astra can't course correct with Rocket 4, they will be rightfully relegated to the dustbin of history. Failures don't have to be a black mark on a company's record. When designing new systems, it is inevitable for there to be some failures, and learning from those is how progress is made. NASA has lost test articles and rockets. SpaceX has lost boosters. Everyone suffers losses. So, when India's latest attempt to launch satellites with their new rocket failed Saturday night, it might have been cause for disappointment, but not a deal breaker for the country's efforts to join the space race. On Saturday, August 6th, the Indian Space Research Organization orchestrated a picture-perfect first-time launch of their small satellite launch vehicle system. The rocket performed flawlessly right up until the final stage, the velocity trimming module, which is designed to place payloads in the correct orbit. The feed cut out for a moment and briefly turned back on when the two satellite payload was deployed, but by that point, the damage had been done. The satellites had been placed in a highly elliptical orbit and were impossible to recover. Indeed, the ISRO reported that the satellites have already come back down and are unusable. It will take some time to find out exactly what went wrong. The elliptical orbit suggests an engine may have cut out early, but the ISRO do know that one issue was that a sensor failure caused the software to not detect whatever happened to the engines. This system is designed to switch to a salvage action, attempting to save the payload. And that never happened. So the job now is to find out what happened. The SSLV will be the third rocket platform in India's fleet once testing is done, and is intended to launch small sats on a more regular cadence than some of the ISRO's bigger rockets. This story is a great comparison to what's been happening with Astra. What India is dealing with right now are the growing pains expected from a new rocket system. They have been testing and iterating on their rocket system for roughly five years now. 
They've done stress tests and static fires, changed systems, and made software updates. And only after all of that did they attempt an orbital flight, which only failed at the very last stage. That is how testing is done. That is an acceptable failure, one that the ISRO will likely learn from and use to iterate their design further. We expect to see more great things from the SSLV and India's space industry in the near future. So wish their engineers luck in the comments below. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.